Hi there, my name's Jane Anderson and this is the Jane Anderson Brand You Show. It's the podcast for experts who want to have greater impact, influence and income for their businesses and careers. As experts, we know that people buy from people and work with people who they know, who they like and who they trust. So I'm so glad you're here because it's that time again now to really amplify how you show up in the world. Welcome to the Jane Anderson Brand You Show today. I am so excited about today's guest because as you know, we talk about all things brand you and particularly businesses that are that are personally branded businesses like yourname.com because people buy from people and they buy from people who they know, like and trust. So today's expert, she is real, she's poised, self-assured and she's Australia's modern day expert on all things relating to sex, dating, relationships and everything in between. (laughs) Uh, So she has that incredible ability to normalize the subjects of sex and relationships and her fresh and balanced candid views make her instantly relatable and approachable. Our guest has appeared on shows like The Seven Network. She writes monthly for a a bunch of incredible magazines like uh, Cosmo, Daily Mail, AskMen.com. She's on the airwaves uh, in Australia in 2UE, 4BC, um, and uh, Austera's National Network. She was voted Australia's Best Sex Educator for 2012 and 2013. Uh, She's young, she's bright, she's brutally honest (laughs) and uh, already has a a wonderful, incredible background um, that many of her peers would would envy. And and I can certainly um, say that I admire our guest today. Um, So I welcome and uh, can't wait to share with you uh, Dr. Nikki Goldstein. So thank you so much for coming, Nikki. Thank you for having me and thanks for the nice introduction. <laughs> oh, my pleasure. I think There's so much to you. I think I could just spend 20 minutes talking about all the amazing things you've done. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good. So at least I know I'm on the right track professionally. Yeah, absolutely. So you're Dr. Nikki Goldstein and um, you've, uh, you know, you've built an incredible um, uh portfolio of, of yourself and being able to put yourself out there with your media interviews and I want to talk a bit about your book and all those types of things but I'd love to tell us a bit about the type of business that you have you know how did you how did you go down this path and um, who do you help now? Well it was all very trial and error I think I didn't really in the beginning have any idea what I was doing business wise Mm. I knew from a professional point of view that I wanted to do something that was different I wanted to do something that I felt people needed and I didn't want to work nine to five and wanted to be able to do it myself Mm -hmm. um while I was studying this degree in human sexuality I got the opportunity to go on channel seven as an expert and I had a, a blog at the time called The Adventures of G-Girl, which mm-hmm. started off with this mystical character and she blogged and she had sex toys there. And, and it was very quickly when I saw underneath my name, Nikki Goldstein, The Adventures of G-Girl, and I thought, that's not really me and it's not really my intent to why I'm doing this. I found it an amazing platform to be able to start talking about really important issues, but it didn't match up with the adventures of G-Girl. But also I never saw myself as a personality. Mm. So, you know, that's a big ego thing to, to take into account is because I was very humble and mm. was like, well, this is a great opportunity. And people started saying to me about my branding and my profile and and you start to realize eventually you are the business. Yeah. But in order to run that business, you actually need to step away from yourself and nearly look at yourself from that bird's eye view. And you need to see as, you know, I, I see for myself, I'm Nikki and Dr. Nikki. Mm. And I get to look at Dr. Nikki and work out what should she be doing? What shouldn't she be doing? How is the rest of the world viewing me and my professional capabilities? Because that is the structure of the business. Yeah, yeah. Because it, it's it's you. You are the brand. And um, do you find that hard to have that helicopter view sometimes? It's almost disassociating yourself from you in yeah. a way, is it? It is difficult Mm. because you're emotionally invested in what you do when you are the Mm. brand and there's reasons why you might be motivated to do things other than financial gain. Mm. So what I found with, especially with my current job at the moment, I just keep coming across this content that I really feel that women need to know or, you know, men need to start talking about 
but then you also need to have that business brain that comes into it and you have to consider things like, you know, what are the long-term implications of this? Mm -hmm. Um, Also, there's a real temptation. You just want to work for free, but you also want (laughs) to make money out of what you do. And Mm. that's the difficult thing when you're emotionally invested is because this content is really interesting and it's really needed. But at the same time, this is a business and it has bills Mm. and, you know, writing a book as much as, it's a great opportunity, you still have bills associated with it. So that's where it can be very difficult to step back because there's a part of you that's really churning and saying, oh, but I but I want to do this and I want to write all these articles and I want to get on my soapbox and say these things. The bird's eye, Nikki, has to go, hmm, what's, this, what's the implications of this and how are we actually going to factor this into what the job is? Right, so it's, it's coming, keeping coming back to that purpose every time. Is that right? Yeah, it is coming back to that purpose. I also yeah. think you start to factor in things like future branding. Yes. When you start off in this industry and you have no idea what you're doing, you don't really consider a future. Yes. You just think, yeah, I'm going to get in there and give it a crack and see what happens. Yes. When things start to formulate, then you need to really start considering well, where am I going to go in the next five years and what's that going to look like? Because I have experienced things that I've done in the past. You know, everything can be Google search and there's nothing I'm ashamed of doing, but Mm. especially when I'm doing a lot of work now within the dating relationship context and a lot of female empowerment stuff. Mm. In the beginning, I was very much sex focused and that's what my label was always sexologist. I worked for Sexpo. I I did a lot of things like that, which was a great opportunity. Mm -hmm. But now I'm trying to say to people, hey, I can really empower women and help women and I'm not just a person who can talk to you about, you know, the specifics of what goes in in a bedroom. So you really need to consider, well, what am I doing now? Where potentially may I want to go in the next five to ten years? What impact will my business and personal decisions have now on my future desires professionally? That's really interesting, Nikki, because one of the things that we talk a bit about on the on the podcast is about the the benefit of using your name dot com because of the flexibility that it gives you. So if you were named, you know, if, if you were branding yourself sexexpert.com all the time, then you know, having your name dot com has that been the experience for you that you can future plan but you can flex. As well. well, you have to be flexible because yeah. I think when you are the name of your business, there is a parallel to my personal life and my professional life. Mm-hmm. I choose at to what level I want to be open with that. But I think one of the benefits of, you know, running this as my name is I'm able to connect with people. I'm able to identify with my audience. But then I also need to be very conscious of the parallel. So Mm. at the moment I can talk about dating and I can talk about a single life and I can talk about relationships, but Mm -hmm. you wouldn't find me bringing out a book on what it's like to be sexy after childhood or menopause. (laughs) You know, these are subjects professionally, yes, I can talk about, but I'm fully aware that if I want to identify and connect with my audience, that's not where my life is at. So one of the benefits I think of you know, having my name running the business is that as I go through these different stages of life, I'm able to take on a new area. So, you know, Mm. as I get married and have children, there's another focus for my job. As I, you know, struggle with menopause and getting older, there's another, there's another aspect that I can deal with as well. Yes. So that's where you have to be flexible, but you also need to make sure that there is some structure because I think you can be too flexible. Right. Yes. Okay. Have you had any, have, uh, have there been any particular challenges that have been thrown at you that uh, having your name.com that you've kind of gone, oh, if I didn't have my name on this, it'd be easier. Or have you had any issues like that come up? Uh, definitely, because I think there's things that I want to say and I have to consider the other people in my life. Right. Um, obviously, with the book, I was the first time I really became quite open about things and what I had experienced and who I had dated and it was a real struggle to look at those stories and there was a lot that actually came out because an editor and I had to sit down and go, well, what's the purpose of having that story in there? Is it because I want to air my dirty laundry or is it because I think that my reader can benefit from that? Mm -hmm. So, you know, at the same time though, I wanted to be really careful that I protected everyone's identities, but I was also respectful to the people that I had dated. Um, You know, there are things coming up in the future where you think, 
you know, it's one thing for me to live this life and I've chosen to do it and I have, um, you know, I'm aware of the implications, but, you know, I'm dating and I have family and friends and sometimes you need to consider the impact on them as well. I mean, my parents can't escape the fact that they are the parents of a sexologist <laughs> and other people are going to pick up this book and they might read it and say to my mother, oh, did you know this is what your daughter got up to? They are things that I need to consider and balance yes. out between why I'm doing what I'm doing. So, you know, it's important to have your message, but you do also need to consider what impact that message is going to have on your personal life, yes. but your further personal life. You know, if you have a partner and you're a sexologist and you're dishing the dirt on your sex life and your relationship, your partner never chose to be a sexologist, but they did choose to date you. So yes. it does get a little bit more complex when, you know, you do add that personal flavor to it. I believe it's important and I believe that a lot of sexologists who are a lot older never did it. It was taught to me, you you separate your professional and personal lives. Don't give right. your personal lives away. But I really think in this era, we're looking to connect with people. Yes. And that's where this reality space has become so popular and the online space and Twitter and Instagram. When people are getting on their soapbox or if they're experts or they're running businesses, we want to know something about them. We want to know what they're doing, what they're wearing. Yep. Even if someone was running a business and they're promoting a particular product, I think it makes us connect with the product more when we understand the story behind it, why they created it, yes. do they use their own product. This is where personal lives really do have a benefit in the business world, but you constantly need to challenge at what cost that is. Right. And that's interesting because, you know, that is one of the biggest fear factors, I think, with some of the clients I see and people who are looking at their name.com is, you know, like you spoke about before, it's, you know, coming out of that limelight and, you know, making it more about you. But at the same time, kind of going, you know, like I think if, if you were a columnist before, you could just write your column in, the, in a magazine or a newspaper and there you go. I've kind of given my insights. But as you say, now it's about connection and for me to be able to create that connection I have to have I have to be in the world that those readers are or those people that connect with my message are and just having a column in a magazine isn't the way it works anymore but I think also the tricky thing is you have to be authentic yes because we have seen a lot of people that over filter photos and yes. they promote a lifestyle that they don't really live and that it is falsified. Yes. Yeah. And I think at first when that started happening, we weren't aware of what goes on behind the scenes. But, you know, thanks to social media and thanks to online media, we have seen those people come unstuck a bit. So I think that's the real challenge too is if you're going to have – yourname.com and you are going to be the business, yes, you have to monitor the level between what you give away in your personal life, but you, you also need to make sure those aspects that you are giving away is your authentic self mm -hmm. because it comes down to credibility as well. Um, you know, especially being an expert, sometimes you need to practice what you preach. And if I'm sitting there and practicing, you know, lecturing to women about loving themselves and their bodies and how they should be self-confidence, then, you know, maybe it's okay sometimes to post a photo that isn't that flattering. I laugh it off because I go, it's bound to happen. I'm not going to be overconscious and start editing my photos. Yes. And it's also one of the risks of working in media. You don't get a say sometimes. If one photo came up today and I thought, <laughs> oh, that's not the best one. But I screenshot it and I send it to my girlfriend and I say, oh, ha, ha, you know, this is hilarious. Because, you know, if I am practicing what I preach and I am my authentic self, then I'm okay with that. It's just a photo. But if I was running around heavily editing things, having the final say on bits and pieces and asking for my photos to be retouched, if that came out, you would actually question then what I was preaching to other women. Yes. Yeah, exactly. Then it, you haven't got the parallels working. No. And I think but that's wonderful that, you know, something that I was um, – I hope you don't mind me sharing that, you know, you did uh, your book launch recently on the Gold Coast and something that was just so wonderful was your family all there and you had <laughs> lots of photos. It was wonderful. It was so nice. to. It was a part, you know, of, of your authentic self and, you know, you can kind of go, oh, it's all, yeah, it's part of brand but when it's actually, it's just really who you are and that's, it's so authentic and it was lovely um, to be able to get, you know, when I think sometimes when you've got that, 
that happening. It's it's that three dimension of 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 who you are that you go, yeah, she's like me. I think mean, people we're a bit like mirrors. People see themselves in us, don't they? Yeah. You know? And it was like, oh, her family kind of look like mine. Oh, her brother in law looks like my brother in law. And you know, you kind of like, oh my, oh, she look at all her cousins. And you know, I think um, that people connect with that, don't they? That that three dimension of you. Yeah, and that's when you know when you are a name dot com you're not just a profession and that's what you've got to realize if you want to have a twitter account and an instagram account then you know one of the best things i did was have a personal and a private instagram but i do show my personal life on my professional instagram account because i want people to be able to see especially with my line of work i'm just a normal girl really i've got a fun (laughs) job i've got a fun job title and i get to do some amazing opportunities but I'm just like everybody else. Yeah. I'm a 20-something year old who's trying to make it in this world with some amazing support from family and friends. And I think also too because I preach that as something that's really important whether it's relationships or whether it's success in general, you need that support network. I'm yes. really happy to show that to go this these are the people that keep me going and mm. and this is how I survive in a world with a flexible job title and no real job description yes. is because they are by my side. Yeah, I think your dad was processing the payments for your book. And <laughs> yep, dad that. was on the credit card <laughs> machine. My dad actually rang me up from a bookshop the other day and said, so I'm just a Dimmicks at Pacific Fair and I've taken all your books from the middle shelf and I've displayed them nicely on the top <laughs> shelf. Oh, so you've got him trained well. <laughs> yeah, wonderful. and it's nice to have that support it? because it can be, I think book writing can be a really lonely process yes. and it's so exhausting and it is so much work for this few bits of paper then it's it's another process to actually sell it so you know you sometimes need all the help you can get and just knowing that you've got someone running around bookshops and taking it into a prime position I think you know what if you've sold me a few more books dad then you know it's all worthwhile (laughs) exactly that's just wonderful so Tell us a bit about the book because I've, I've had a look at it and I've been reading it myself and there's, you've got some amazing suggestions and ideas and you're so open with your own life that's been in there. So tell us about it. So I came up with the title, hashtag single but dating, mm. um, actually when I was sitting under a tree in Vanuatu, which I kind of had oh. the lightning bolt moment. I know I love it. I was I was at a rowing um, competition with my brother and they're very long and tedious and so I started writing a book. Um But it was motivated by this idea that I was constantly asked, was I single, was I seeing somebody? And I never knew how to respond to that because over the last five or so years, I'd gone in and out of many relationships. I was dating people. I was having flings. Maybe I was having something casual with someone, but yet I still had to declare that I was single. Mm -hmm. And I felt there was a negative stigma associated with that. And people would show pity on you. And I think, don't worry, I'm I'm not not having fun. And there's no (laughs) lack of men in my life. Yeah. Um, So it wasn't just the label, but it was this idea that as a woman, we really need to go out there and experiment and work out what's right or wrong for us. It's not a matter of being told the rules. Um, I did read the book and there was some things that I thought were really empowering for women, but Uh I also thought just in this modern society, it's not about saying to a woman, this is what you should and shouldn't do. Uh It's about giving her the right tools so she can go out into the real world and actually discover what she wants, separate from what she feels she should want and also what she feels is validating. Right. And so the purpose of the book for you is we talk a little bit about um, and to go a little bit under the hood, I suppose, with your business and and, uh, and your book, Um, what has been the purpose of the book for you and for your future coming up in your business? Well, for starters, I wanted to write a book that was actually useful to women. As an expert, you're always told you need a book, you need a book, you need a book. But Mm -hmm. you think if you're going to go through the effort of doing it, why not do something that people are going to get something from? So that was tick. That was the first thing. But then from a business point of view, you do need to look at a book is a great platform to other things, but it's not going to be um, the moneymaker that a lot of people think. Yes. So you do then need to look at, well, what can you do stemming from the book? So that's where I really had to look at a lot of my terminology and coming up with something that was new and different. Mm-hmm. And just by having that ta- that title, hashtag single but dating, yes. um, we've now found, you know, within 
a few weeks of writing the first book, I'm having conversations with my editor about the second and third book right. because it started leading into a lot of other catchier things. There's been a few people pipe up about, you know, other branding opportunities where we can take the book and, you know, online programs and things like that. So you really need to be able to see that the book is the the stepping stone. It's the other, the next thing that you get to get to the next point. It's not the make or break it financially, mm -hmm. but you need it as a tool to be able to do all these other things, whether it's speaking arrangements, whether sometimes it's coaching, um, online programs, other books. And I think, you know, this is where the pressure is too. If you want a second, third, fourth book, there is so much pressure on the first book because it has to do well and sell well because yeah. then people are going to keep buying your book publishers are going to keep coming back with a contract and that's where you're able to go up and up with financially with what you're doing in the literary world yes it's great um insight and so um so i guess uh, you've covered so much for us and i think for those who are listening who are going how can i make it you know you know, particularly you so inspiring because you you've got this woman's world aspect and you've you've the way that you've set your your business up but you're so beautifully you and uh and you've got that um, wonderful authenticity and just realness about you so um and i can endorse the book it's wonderful it's got lots of uh, your insights are fantastic and very funny, and uh, and so I can highly recommend if you're single but dating, you're looking for those thoughts or ideas. But I think what I loved also about it's a bit about that helicopter view is just how you've used the the book and how it supports all the other activities that you're you're doing. Um, so to wrap up, I guess first question is a uh, last question for is uh, for the audience is. So if people want to work with you or find out more about you, get the book, um, where do they go? What are they best to do? Well, I'm very active online. So I've got a website, drnikki.com.au, uh -huh. um, and they can contact me through there. I also have a Facebook page, which I actually find easier to have conversations okay. with people. So just Dr. Nikki Goldstein. Um, Instagram, Dr. Underscore Nikki G, and Twitter, which is the same, Dr. Underscore Nikki G. So the beautiful thing in this world is that we're all sitting on our phones, we're all connected to the internet. So it's an amazing opportunity to have direct conversations with your audience and find out exactly what they want from you rather than having to go through traditional streams all the time. Yes. You can have conversations with people and they're able to contact you and say, this is what we like, this is our feedback. And I think it also motivates you to keep going when you do get contacted by people, whether they're telling you they like what you read or they have a story they want to share with you as well. Right. Well, fantastic. Well, thank you so much for joining today. Joining us today, uh, Dr. Nikki Goldstein. It's been wonderful to have you. I hope you've all learned as much as I have. Um, and you're such a wonderful inspiration, particularly for women in the personal branding space, but particularly on a topic that is so vulnerable and is so exposing of ourselves. And sometimes we're, that's a bit scary. So, um, so you're certainly shining the light there. So thank you again. And, uh, and look forward to talking to you perhaps when the next book and third book comes out. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for having me. Now I've got to rush back to the laptop and keep writing. <laughs> <All right. laughs>